I'm teacher Robin. Welcome to our first live streaming class of 2020. If this is your first time to join the live streaming classes, let me explain how they work. So today we're going to be talking about ways to offer and ask for help in English. So if you have a question during the class, you can write it in the comment section and I'll be checking your comments as we go along. So we've chosen this topic to start our year because maybe one of your New Year's resolutions is to learn English and it's going to be very important for you uh, when learning or when traveling, etc., to know how to ask someone for help or you can even offer to help someone if you feel like uh, that's what they need. Okay, so let's start with how to offer help. So I'm going to give you all the grammar that you need to form these sentences so that you can say it the correct way. So how can we offer help to someone? Okay, for example, we have the, the, uh, the modal verb may. So we can say, may I do something? All right, so this may here is a modal verb that indicates a possibility, a concession, or a request. So let's look at a few examples with may. May I offer you my help? May I carry your bag for you? Okay, so this is very polite, but it's the perfect way to offer help to someone. If you see a woman, like in this example, if you see a woman at the supermarket and she's carrying a lot of bags, you can say, may I carry your bag for you? Let's look at another way to offer help to someone. We have, would you like me to? Uh, followed by do something, here would be the verb. So this would like is the conditional and we use it to express an offer of help to someone. So this is the conditional form would like. For example, would you like me to open the window? Or would you like me to bring you a drink? Okay, so depending on the subject here, the most uh, common thing is, the most common subject is would you, because you're asking one person. Okay, but the you could also be a you plural, like would you all like me to? Or if you're asking for someone else, you could say would he like me to, would she like me to, would they like me to, etc. All right, let's look at another way to offer help can. So can is another modal verb. For example, can I do something? So this is used to offer help and it's less formal than may. Okay, so may I help you is very formal. Can I help you is not quite as formal. For example, can I bring you dessert or can I give you a lift? All right, I see that many people are watching the video right now, so this is good. Again, if you want to introduce yourself, say where you're watching from, or if you have a question about this topic, please feel free to write it in the comments. I see that Mustafa and Paul have said hello. Thanks for watching. So again, write your questions in the comments. Let's continue with another way to offer help to someone. This is another formal way to offer help, shall. Okay, so this is only used in the first person singular and plural. All right, shall I do something? So you don't say shall he or shall she. We don't use that in English, it's shall I. Okay, shall I turn off the radio, for example? Or shall I help you with your homework? So again, this is formal, but a perfectly acceptable way to offer help to someone. Okay, now that we have finished ways to offer help, let's move on to ways to ask for help. So this is probably the most important one. Uh, if you find yourself in a situation where you need someone to help you, it's important to know the right way to ask them because it's always important to be polite. Okay, so let's start with I'd be happy to. All right, so this is not a question per se, but uh, it's another way that you, can, uh, that you can offer help. Okay, actually, I think this one was supposed to go with, uh, with how to offer help. So, I'd be happy to is a formal way of offering help. It's mostly used in the workplace, and we can say, I'd be happy to reschedule the appointment, for example, or I'd be happy to go with you. All right, 
I can. This is another way to, uh, to offer to do something. You say, I can, uh, for example, write this email for you. I can go buy some coffee. This is a kind way to offer help to someone, but it's, uh, it's, it can be used in both the interrogative and affirmative forms. So actually, you could switch this around. For example, instead of, I can write this email for you, you could switch it and you can say, can I write this email for you? All right, so I see many people are joining from all over the world. We have people from USA, New Jersey, Kentucky, Spain, and Thailand. Okay, that's great. Thanks for watching. All right, another way is to say, let me do something. For example, uh, the, let me help you with your jacket. Let me find out if it's true. So uh, let is a way of offering. It's a kind but kind of informal way of offering assistance to someone. All right, another one, I will. So this is the future simple. You can say, I'll go shopping for you. I will go to the chemist or the pharmacy for you. So it's important to note here that the I will, we can shorten it to the contracted form, I'll, and it has the same meaning. So whether you say I will or I'll, it's perfectly fine when you're offering help to someone. All right, so now that we have looked at some different ways, I want you to write a few examples, okay? So think of examples for asking for help, examples for offering help. Maybe you can even uh, write to each other in the comments. So if you see someone has asked for help in the comments, you can actually write to them and uh, offer help or vice versa. So try to practice with each other. This is a really great way. And, uh, and I'll kind of correct some of them later on. All right, so I see that we have viewers from Moscow, from Quebec, from Mexico, Iraq. Okay, so that's great. So many countries are joining our live streaming session, so that's really good. All right, so as you are writing more of your comments and questions, let me tell you more about everything we have to offer you here at ABBA. We have a complete course. Our course goes from beginners to business level, so it doesn't matter what level you have, you can start studying with us today. It, uh, it is based on short films, so you have a short film, and then you complete exercises to practice all of your skills, reading, writing, listening, and speaking, so that's all covered in our course. And we also have a feature, if you study from the app, called Live English. With Live English, you have daily new content to practice as well, so we have videos, we have articles, we have uh, quizzes, comprehension questions, all kinds of really good activities, again, for all levels for you to practice with us every day at ABBA English. We have a blog called our ABBA Journal. So on our blog, we have articles about every topic you could possibly imagine in English. Uh, this is covered in our blog, so English for business, for travel, etc. You can find articles there. And we are available on all of the uh, the social media networks, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. We are posting new content on those channels every day, so check them out. There's plenty of ways for you to, um, for you to study with us here at ABBA. All right, time to answer your questions. Great, I see that Shenangrak has a question, what's the difference between let and let's? Okay, let is the verb, which means allow. It's, an, it's a synonym of allow someone to do something. And let's is actually the shortened form of let us. So when we are offering something and when we're offering to help someone, we say let us or let's. It's more common to say let's because let us is very, very formal. So if, uh, if you want to offer something, let's say let's go to eat, for example, um, then this is a perfectly correct way to, to offer help in English. Let's see if there are any more questions. As you're writing, let me just tell you about next week's topic. We're going to do a more uh, grammatical one. Many of you have asked about prefixes and suffixes and when to use them, what are the most common ones. And if you've never heard of them before, you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry. Uh, we will define these for you next week. All right, so let's keep looking at a few questions. Mustafa says, could you help me with my baggage? or may I help you 
with your baggage. Okay, excellent. So you've uh, used an example asking for help, could you help me? And an example offering help. So fantastic, well done, all right? Again, if you want to answer each other's questions, uh, participate, start a conversation in the comments, then that's a great way to practice. I think we have a couple more comments. No, okay, then uh, feel free to keep writing and I will correct them later on today. Keep writing. I want to thank everyone who has joined us. It's been a good class. I hope you've learned a lot. And again, join us same time next week for our class on prefixes and suffixes. Okay, I see more countries are joining us. All right, Peru, Haiti, Uruguay, Bulgaria, and Cambodia. So, so many different countries, and this is the great thing that unites us is that you're all watching this live streaming class. So thanks again for watching, and I will see you next week. Take care. Bye. <music>